Hi there, um, I'm Maxi, and this is my final project for 3D printing for creatives. Uh, so what I was actually trying to do was make a model of a doll. So there's a show I watch called Gravity Falls, and there's a serious lack of merchandise for it. So I thought I'd try to make a stylized version of my favorite character, Mabel. Um, so she's one of the main characters, and I always thought it'd be really cool to have something around the house that was from the show. So what I've done is I've used Maya and Mesh Mixer to print a model um, of Mabel that I've done for my own design. And it's a bit clunky because I haven't actually done a full model of anything before, but I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out considering all the work that went into this. So I'm really sorry about the video quality. I cut down a lot of the footage, but it still had to be at 42 times speed to actually fit into about five minutes. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. But what I've done is I've used a lot of different polygons and learned how to manipulate them better so that they can actually form different shapes. Um, so I learned about different ways of rotation and overlapping. I learned how to use the faces and vertices to my advantage kind of thing. Um, the biggest problem I had was actually with her hair. So um, I don't know if you've ever looked up how to make hair in Maya, but it's really hard and there's a lot of different techniques for it. And Maya is mostly used for modeling. So it's usually not solid. So what I tried to do was I tried a few different tutorials. One of them was about um, using curves and then extruding those curves to make um, sort of 3D thick, um, thick strands of hair to make a very stylized cartoony look. But they didn't quite work for me. It was very difficult to get them the right size and they looked like really just strange worms. So um, I gave up on that after a while because it just wasn't working. Um, so most of the tutorials suggested working with um, a large plane and then using the um, faces and then transforming those faces to mold them to the shape of the hair. Um, I tried this for quite a while and it it was actually extremely difficult to get quite right. Um, so I can see I've kind of molded it there. It's like a helmet and this wasn't working for a while. So I eventually tried another technique which was using a 3D object leading some of the some of the sides and then molding it that way. Uh, this actually went a bit better but then Eventually I realized that since I'm printing this object, it does matter that I have a 3D closed mesh. So I actually gave up on the planes and just started using 3D shapes to model with, which meant that there was a lot of overlap with the shape. So when I have to clear up a mesh mix, so there's a lot of work that has to be done because there's a lot of overlapping solids and it would be absolutely terrible to print out. So what I did there is just, I made it solid and then the, printer I had, I used um, CAD 3D, um, they're a local Melbourne 3D printing company, and the guy there helped me um, smooth everything out. So what he did was he just increased the triangle count and then used Mesh Lab to tidy everything up because Mesh Mixer was a bit difficult for me to work with. Um, the quality of the model printed is very, very different to the, mo the final model I have in, mesh in um, uh, sorry, Maya. The Maya model is a lot more detailed and it looks correct, but the model I'm holding right in front of me right now actually doesn't have detail in her fingers anymore, it's just kind of like a small little plane. So that's something in the future if I wanted to work with models, I'd probably not use Mess Mixer anymore, it was just a bit too difficult. But here's what I've done is I've tried to go for quite a blocky version of the hair, so I've just used mostly like cuboids, extrude them into rect rectangles, and I've tried to play with the vertices pulling them up to make sort of a shape of a fringe right here, which take absolutely forever. Um, there's a lot of corners. I wanted more detail, which meant that I had to split it into a lot more faces than probably was necessary. So there was a good um, 40 rows there that I had to play with. So that's why they're a little bit clunky, but again, first time. So, you know, it could have gone a lot worse. Um, this So the, this process went on for a while, um, so what I did was with the polygons I just did that to sculpt the bottom of her hair, the fringe, and the sides. I used um, just straight polygons that had been transformed for I think everything else, um, which was a pretty easy way to do it. I think that if I was going for a more complicated model I'd have to you know um, handle the faces more specifically, but it wasn't necessary for the shape of like a cartoon character. So it's probably a decent choice for a first time. Um, so here I'm just really pulling up those vertices, trying to make it. I'm trying to make it so that it 
the fringe flows smoothly. So I had a model of, I had some sketches of the character to see if I could get the fringe to flow the right way. So it's parted on the side and hangs down further on one side. And the problem with this was that um, because I'm using a 3D shape and not like a plane, was that it actually intercepted with her face and some of the triangles would be hidden, some would be visible depending on what angle the fringe was at. So I had to pull it out a lot. Um, the final thing I worked on was her shoes. Um, now, after all the work with the hair, it was actually a lot easier. I just um, put down some flat circles, extruded them a little bit, and made cute little shoes. They're just school shoes. And a mesh mixer, I just basically, like I said before, made it solid, and I smoothed it out a little bit. But that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed this.